The new German Leopard 2A8 main battle tank has been unveiled. Here's what it can do. Everything you want to know about it here in this video. Heiliger Stroh says save the most at Holy Now with my code. A few days ago, the ceremony took place in Munich, where the Leopard 2A8 was presented to the world. Germany ordered 123 units of them for the Bundeswehr in 2023, and these are the first new builds for the Bundeswehr in a long time. Until then, all Leopard 2 variants, including the A7 version, were always just old hulls that had been modernized. During the Cold War, Germany purchased over 2,000 Leopard 2S, which have only been modernized since. No new ones were built because they had the old hulls. Now that has changed. This was also necessary because the needs of the Bundeswehr have increased and at the same time, the Bundeswehr's large stockpiles were sold off internationally, usually just for the metal's value. Demand has grown so much that new ones are necessary, wanted or not, so they had to be rebuilt. Let's get to the technical details. The main battle tank will weigh 70 tons, probably just under that, but around 70 tons. It still has a crew of four, gunner, driver, loader and commando. That means the gun will still be loaded by hand, just like in the previous models. Also, when it comes to electronics, it is equipped with third generation thermal imaging devices for the commander and gunner. The main battle tank also has hunter killer capability, allowing the commander to identify and track another target while the gunner engages the first one. This allows for faster target switching and more effective engagement. So far, it also has a crew. Up to now, it has had a crew of four men. So far, it also has a crew. Up to now, it has had a crew of four men. Protection is vital for a main battle tank, and this one features the trophy hard kill system. This is a defense system originally from Israel, which is already used on the Leopard 2A7 and A1. It is equipped with four radar devices and two launchers, and therefore covers the vehicle 360 degrees all around. The radar devices detect incoming explosive projectiles and then fire a counter charge. These use grinding devices and shrapnel to ensure that the incoming explosive projectiles are detonated before impact and thus they cannot seriously damage the armor of the battle tank. The system works against ATGMs, that is anti-tank guided missiles, against high explosive anti-tank against shaped charge projectiles, and against rocket propelled grenades. Especially now in December, when you're on the go a lot, working long hours and the holidays are just around the corner, I notice how important stable routines are for health and energy. To make sure my start to the day doesn't depend on chance, I've developed a simple morning routine. Even before I turn on my computer, I drink my AG1. I've been taking AG1 daily for quite some time now. Not a miracle cure, but a building block that prepares my body and mind equally well. I work for many hours at a stretch. Unfortunately, I often don't move enough in my daily life. And when things get stressful, I don't always eat ideally. AG1 makes me feel like I'm getting essential vitamins, minerals, probiotics, plant compounds and fiber in one serving rather than taking multiple supplements. What convinced me back then was the scientific background. AG1 is based on over 15 years of research and is continuously being developed, most recently with a higher magnesium content and nine tested bacterial strains. In an industry where many manufacturers rarely test products, AG1 uses the gold standard, randomized, placebo-controlled, double or triple blind studies. These studies show AG1 nutrients are quickly bioavailable and can significantly increase good gut bacteria. For me, that's an important point because I personally perceive exactly these two effects, the rapid absorption and the improved gut stability, as positive. Even though, of course, I can't say for sure what exactly makes the difference. AG1 is independently tested and is certified by both the Cologne List and Informed. Every single batch is also tested for quality and safety in external laboratories. 
from heavy metals to allergens to microbial parameters. If you want to try AG1 this winter, there's a limited intro offer at www.drinkag1.com. M Geschichte offers the first month for 69 euros down from 89 euros. You also receive the full welcome kit free shaker, can and spoon. The subscription has no shipping fees, can be paused or cancelled anytime and is risk free with a 30 day money back guarantee. If you want to see how a stable morning routine can help you in December, visit www.drinkage1.com. M. Gierskichter. It is ineffective against armor piercing, fin stabilized, discarding, sabot, or subcaliber kinetic energy rounds. Trophy can also technically counter drones, provided they don't approach from very steep angles. I haven't found any unanimous reports about that, though some claim the trophy system on the Leopard 2A8 counters first person view drones. I haven't found any confirmation yet. Technically, however, this adaptation should be relatively easy to implement, but at this point, it is not being marketed that way yet. Therefore, it can be assumed that at least a software update will be necessary before Trophy can be effective against small drones as well. The new vehicle design also enables an armor upgrade. Rather than using the old model, you could also make detailed changes to the armor. And so the composite armor was adapted to the new conditions and new findings. This consists of steel, including tungsten and ceramics, as well as other compounds, in order to withstand both kinetic projectiles and shape charges, and thus to ensure the operational readiness and survival of the soldiers on board. The armor was reinforced at the front, on the turret sides, on the roof, and on the underside, on the one hand. Threats from above, which can be first-person view drones or anti-tank missiles coming from above to better withstand these, and from below, of course, against mines and explosive charges. The turret armor, together with the Karl armor, which causes kinetic projectiles to tumble, and the new elements on the turret, have massively extended the turret itself. You can see the drastic difference compared to the earlier Leopard 204. Now the turret almost extends beyond the front of the vehicle itself, a smoke grenade launcher is also used for protection. In principle, it is also capable of using explosive shells. However, this is usually not done. The armament consists of an RH 120 L55 A1 or 120 M Nini smoothbore gun from the German manufacturer Rheinmetall, which finds other customers worldwide. Among others, the American M1 Abrams uses an American licensed version of the Rheinmetall 120, although with a different caliber length. This gun can fire DM-73 armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding sabot, which is the most modern variant of the 120 mm kinetic energy rounds produced in Germany. These have an even higher penetration capability, and at the same time, its propellant is very unlikely to detonate when hit. So even if the ammunition is hit, it usually doesn't cause the vehicle to explode like we've seen many times with Russian tanks in Ukraine. The gun can also fire the... Panalim, panalim, anal. Annihilated, anal, anilwell, 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 anilwell. Use percussion caps if you want to fight that. Or you can use an airburst fuse, for example, to detonate a grenade like this over an enemy position that would otherwise be protected so that the shrapnel effect can work from top to bottom. This is what programmable ammunition can do so that a single projectile can be programmed as needed. The nominal combat range for these projectiles is 5 km, and for the armor-piercing ammunition, it is specified as 4 km. Based on experience, however, at least theoretically, a greater distance is possible in special cases, especially if the crew is particularly well trained. The Leopard 2 R8 features a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun. Another machine gun is usually placed on the roof, among other things, to serve as anti-aircraft defense. Currently, no weapon station is planned yet, but it is possible. Other Leopard 2 R8 customers have ordered the German variants.
The main battle tank uses a 1,500 horsepower multi-fuel engine from German manufacturer Motoren und Turbinen Union. Hand operated. Exciting music and canal and canal release and canal Munich para. Of the them charging the onboard batteries without starting the main engine. This in turn allows for drastic fuel savings because of course the engine is much smaller and the consumption is much lower. And that enables a drastically reduced heat signature. This allows the vehicle to remain operational for hours, possibly days, ready for combat, without having to give up its electronic capabilities. And when the battle begins, the main engine is started without the gasoline or diesel tank being empty. Now, after the vehicle has been presented, the integrated verification process begins, where the new tanks are thoroughly tested before the German armed forces grant approval for use. Production vehicles will be delivered to the troops in 2027. The first recipient will be the 45th Tank Brigade in Lithuania, which is stationed at the Belarusian border to protect NATO territory. They will then receive the most modern German battle tanks, the delivery of the 123 units is scheduled to be completed by 2030 and then the Bundeswehr will have over 430 Leopard 2 tanks. However, it has been reported and the Minister of Defense has announced that an additional 75 battle tanks are to be procured. So the total number is expected to rise to over 500. Also present was Federal Minister of Defense Boris Pistorius from the Social Democratic Party of Germany. He wants to order another 75 Leopard 2 tanks of the latest generation from the tank manufacturer KNDS next year. In addition to Germany, the Netherlands is procuring 46 Leopard 2 tanks, the Czech Republic 44 and Norway 54. One of the two models presented was actually meant for Norway. Croatia is buying 50 Leopard 2 tanks, Lithuania 44, and Sweden also wants to buy 44 Spain has expressed interest, but as far as I can see, no contract has been signed yet. It wants to get rid of its old Leopard 2 tanks, which apparently are no longer really in good condition, so modernization isn't really worth it. It apparently wants to replace them with newly built Leopard 2 A8S, but as I said, at this point the exact number is still unclear. And that's it for the Leopard 2 A8. Um, what do you think about it? Do you think it's a good decision by the Bundeswehr to acquire this vehicle? If so, share your opinion in the comments. If you're new here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss future videos. That's all from my side for now. Thank you for your attention and see you soon. Thanks also to the supporters on Patreon as well as here on YouTube. I would especially like to thank Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Kamp, Lieutenants Uwe de Vrenig, Named 2 Bib, Carsten Schulz, Sasha Horvath Gulash Nasha, 4000 Tequila, 42 Badass Lawyer, Mahamori, Robert, Viel Bertenment, Janice G, Anti-X, Sasha Müller, Cunningham and Eustress. Thank you very much. Without them, it wouldn't be possible like this.